Today on FTR TV, we're gonna take apart the great white GW30 skimmer and have a look inside and see how it's fared after about eight months of use. G'day everyone, my name is David Meyer. Welcome back to First Time Reefer TV. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, tank update video. It's been a long time coming and I do apologize, but uh, today we're gonna start a series of videos of just taking apart a few pieces of equipment that have been on the tank and uh, just let you guys know how it's fared over the last eight months and uh, what I think about it as well. Uh, so today we're gonna have a look at the uh, Delua GW30 Great White Skimmer. Um, it's, it's obviously got no froth in here as you can see there, but that's because I've just actually just dosed a bit of uh, Coral Essentials Energy to the tank, so that's killed the foam production for a couple of hours, but um, you can see this cup is pretty full there, and I, am, I was skimming a little bit more wet, because um, I didn't have filter socks in there, but the filter socks in there now. Uh, but I've also, uh, my man Eric Jucic has just finished my new roller mat, um, and completely assembled, so uh, that's on its way down to me, so I'll share that with you guys, how we're gonna modify this sump to get that roller mat in, but I cannot wait to get the roller mat back onto the tank because it's been an absolute pain in the behind using filter socks. I hate filter socks, man, but uh, roller mats is the only way to go, but this cup is uh, pretty bloody full today. So um, I've got one of these little buckets. We'll uh, empty out the skimmer cup, get rid of all the funky gunk in there. That'll allow me to uh, turn I well, won't get this, turn the skimmer off. Um, and also take the cup off to pull it out. But I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer just to have a look at the cup there. And you can see the, the GW30, well, all the great whites. Oh, that's terrible. It smells. Now it's got a really nice long hose in it. Looks about 50 uh, centimeters, about half a meter or so. So you can leave the skimmer in place and uh, empty it into a bucket very, very easily if you just one, just emptying the skimmer cup because it's full, or in this instance where you want to empty it so you can take the cup off and um, give the skimmer a little bit of a service. But let me, uh, oops, you do want it to stink because you know that it's doing its job, but there's just this putrid smell uh, from the skimmer cup. But uh, yeah, it's just not nice. But uh, the skimmer cup is nearly uh, empty here. And you can see that the neck down the bottom has stayed relatively clean, uh, but the neck, uh, in the sort of reaction chamber up the top there, it's pretty clagged, so that's obviously going to affect uh, the performance of the skimmer as well. So that's why a couple of them do have uh, a rotating head that you can uh, get. Unfortunately, the Great White doesn't yet, but hopefully that's gonna be something that they can uh, introduce in the future as an upgrade, even if it's just a manual head cleaner where you can twist the lid to, to clean it up. But um, having the, the, the neck clean is uh, really important to the uh, skimmer working really well and getting all the gunk out of there. But, oh man, this smells absolutely disgusting. And I'll, I'll show you guys in a sec. Ah, inside this cup that I've emptied. Ugh, filthy, filthy, filthy. The cup is virtually empty now. Don't forget to shut the lid on that. Oh, shut the, the tap. I'm gonna go over to my control center and just turn off my skimmer. That's gonna get all the, the pumps gonna cut out now. All the air's gonna cut out. So we'll get a lid on this bucket because it just smells putrid. And then we'll take the skimmer out. So really nice, just a twist uh, lid there. You can see it's been skimming like an absolute beast off the top there. A couple of marks up the top. So that's the skimmer cup. And then for this one, I should be able to just undo it. Let's have a look with it. All right, so we've got the cable pulled through now. Just disconnect from the cold controller uh, quite easily. And then I want to try and make as little mess as I possibly can. 
Just let that water get out of it. Okay, about to get all the water out. And there's a tight squeeze. Get the unit out. Oh, we will get there. Here we go. It's a bit of gunk in there. Well, let's uh, take this inside now. Yeah. Let's take this inside now and I'll take it apart and I'll show you guys uh, inside the unit and some of the features. All right, so we're in my laundry here at home um, and uh, we're gonna give this skimmer a bit of a clean out and see what's inside. Uh, flathead screwdriver always makes things a little bit easier just to get the little grub nuts off the bottom. Uh, a sponge, or in this case, I've got uh, one of my wife's beautiful little hand towels. I'm just gonna get wet so we can scrub everything down. And for anything particularly uh, stubborn, I've got a brush here as well. It's not a fish brush, but uh, um, my wife won't know. Uh, so let's just quickly start with this. I'll pull it out so you can see that's the gate valve there. And uh, this is the neck ring silencer that's a very unique uh, feature for the great white skimmers. Um, that's where the uh, air actually draws through to get to the body. So that gets rid of that traditional big chunky silencer that usually sits down on the side of the unit. It's really nice, compact. So you've only got one line that goes from the pump into this air uh, neck ring silencer. Um, and it makes the unit um, a lot less bulky. So I'll just quickly disconnect that. Let's uh, take the gate valve off. Just like that. Got a little low ring that goes on the rod as well, just stop it floating away, so don't lose that. And then what we'll do is, I'm gonna pull off the Venturi, and we'll have a look inside there to see uh, whether that's clogged at all. And essentially, you've got the four screws on the bottom here, so all you gotta do is just take them off, and you'll be able to open up uh, the skimmer to give it a good clean out inside. So got the four little nuts off, put them aside. What you'll be able to do is now just lift this off and that'll separate the body from the pump assembly. You can unscrew this. This is a diffuser. Now uh, it's got this little tab here on the diffuser and that's you know, very there for an absolute purpose. And what that needs to do is actually just sit above your gate valve. So the gate valve is coming out this way and that'll just avoid any bubbles that is churning up the top here to you know get sucked down that uh, vortex of where the gate valve is. And that my friends avoids any micro bubbles uh, getting into your system. So look here, that's the base plate, pretty clean. Well, I suppose it hasn't had uh, stock in there for too long, but I'll be interested, interested to see how it goes looking inside the pump. I'll just give that a quick clean. That's one item. Give the diffuser a scrub down. Not too crazy dirty. And you'll notice the uh, acrylic on this is a really nice, thick, uh, good quality acrylic. Not thin, it's not going to snap. So you can be probably a little bit off with it, but, but you take this opportunity to give everything a really good clean. And I've seen a bit of a debate online of needing to you know, clean this using tank water. I don't clean my skimmers with tank water at all and uh, never have. I don't see the need in doing that and I've never seen any ill effect otherwise. So, But that's just me, everyone is different. I don't have 15 years of experience like some other people may have, so I don't claim to know everything. But uh, that's for the diffuser. Get that a clean. I can have a look at the pump. Now, if this was particularly dirty, which it isn't, I'd probably give give it a citric acid bath, which uh, you know I've got in some of my 
in a video on on my channel but this one's uh, pretty good I'll see if we can open it up and have a look inside so to take the pump apart it's just two screws uh, a screw on either side of the pump which connects to a nut at the back here and then a, nut, a, a screw at the top and a screw at the bottom uh, so four screws in total now you just got to make sure you're really careful not to lose this so if, there, if i've got any criticism about the pump is the fact that it uh, you know you have a possibility of maybe if you're not careful but you can lose these lug nuts which as long as you're careful you'll be all right but Uh, screw it and we'll pull the face plate off and it just comes off like that with the four screws attached to it just pull the thread get that like that so that's super easy just give that a quick rinse that's actually not dirty at all to be honest so. uh, but what I do want to see is how this needle wheel has gone over the few months so uh, just pull that out. So it's got a whole face plate actually uh, included. And there's a tiny little bit of scum on the magnet, but nothing terrible. And then if we have a look in here, just a couple of pieces of gunk, which uh, is very, very normal, just getting stuck in there. But you do want to just give that a good rinse, clean it out, and uh, there's lots of chunks in there. I'd get in there pretty aggressively and use a toothbrush or something to clean it out. But looking at this, it's actually pretty good. There's a needle wheel in there. There's actually not much in there at all. That's that one. Let me just clean out in the hole there and give the face paint it's got this uh, rubber seal uh, very much like my Deltec has uh, just to hold that face plate on and create a seal with the where the magnet goes and this one here is a 85 watt max watt minimum watt is 20 watts 6 meters of head height and an 8000 litre per hour pump but for eight months use, I'm pretty happy with how clean that is. So we'll reassemble this now. Just gently slide that in. And there's a little seat that it goes into. And you just gotta twist it and turn it just to make sure it seats into place. That's really important. You can see the acrylic faceplate there sits right up against that uh, rubber seal. Make sure it's spinning freely, not impeded by anything. And then this faceplate goes back on, just like that, nice and easy. So four screws are done up nice and tight now. We'll, uh, we'll give the body a bit of a clean. I'll take you guys back for that. You'll see the neck o-ring up here make sure that's uh, sitting in its little seat don't lose that that'll create a nice seal for you then we'll put it back together clean the lid as well you can see how much gunk and filth has come out <laughs> disgusting give it a good spray down luckily my laundry here <laughs> it's got a ventilation fan um, so the missus is probably, hopefully not going to smell this at all later. Or if not, I'm going to be in a whole world of pain. Let's get it all cleaned out. And the lid as well. And then I'll show you guys the neck. Just going to have a look at that. 
Oh. It is a little bit wetter, but you can see it's just terrible. I'll give that a spray down as well. And once we are done with this, we're ready to get the unit back together and back on. And I'll run through the features with you once it's back on the tank. That's that. Another cool feature is the way that the uh, Venturi connects to the, the Venturi line. So these are 3D printed Venturi, so specifically designed um, because they couldn't actually find something that would uh, suit what they wanted. Uh, but really good quality print from VCA. But you see here, the hose doesn't fit over a barb. It actually seats into a hole like this that holds it pretty tight. Um, but that allows for the maximum air draw to come through here through the Venturi without blocking. As a traditionally, you'd have a little nipple that this goes over and that essentially just cuts that diameter into half. But uh, clean as a whistle, as you can see there. No uh, calcification of uh, any sort that I can see. But we'll give it a rinse out anyway. Let's make sure there is nothing in there, which there isn't. And the Venturi lines, make sure that's no gunk in there, which there isn't. And then we are ready to assemble this back up. All right, so we've got the skimmer nice and clean now. Let's get it back into the sump. Let's see, it is quite a tight fit. Get in there. Get the uh, gate valve in properly. Get the skimmer cut back on. That just slots in there. Twists close like that. Make sure your tap is in the off position. And get this lid back on. It literally just fits inside here. Like that. I'm gonna just turn this onto an angle a little bit. Just allow me to give access to this and just fits a little bit better within my stand. We'll run this back, get it all plugged in. I'll turn it on and show you guys how it operates. All right. So we've got the skimmer all connected back up now. I'm gonna turn it back on from the controller here. You see, let's turn the camera around and I'll show you. So you can see now that we've serviced the skimmer, it's foaming up really nicely. And uh, the bubbles inside actually uh, much finer, getting that gunk out of the um, out of the needle wheel. So you can see, set you guys down here. The action inside there is fantastic, and you can see how that little tab that's just above the gate valve here just stops that vortex of being able to suck any bubbles down uh, and stopping all those micro bubbles. But that action inside there is just. I love watching skimmers. And then we come up the look here. This is the uh, air adjustment knob on the neck ring silencer, as I mentioned before. I generally have this quite open because I want to you know, have as much air as going in there as possible. Um, I think this is drawing about a, la a thousand liters per, uh, per hour of air, or these per minute, I think. Uh, but that's really nice way stops that big bulky air silencer unit on the side uh, but you can see definitely once you service your skimmer she's very very happy you can hear that it's uh, quite silent the dc pumps on these uh, great white uh, skimmers are, are fantastic it's been reliable out of all the great white dc skimmers that i've owned so far I haven't had an issue um, but uh, yeah notoriously known for the very very silent compared to a lot of the skimmers out there in the market and really simple to tune. Um, I don't find it very overly sensitive. Sometimes a lot of skimmers, as soon as you touch this adjustment knob, you can go from overflowing to uh, uh, you know skimming down here 
but I find that uh, you know you can make really nice adjustments and really fine tune the skimmer to get some nice nice bubble production just like that. So if you guys like this video, this skimmer is going to probably still take a couple of hours uh, before it sort of gets back to where it was before and the energy is out of the water. But uh, like I said, I'll do that a couple of times a year just to make sure you're staying on top of your equipment maintenance, uh, but you don't want anything stuck in that needle wheel because that's definitely going to affect the amount of uh, foam production that you get and the amount of air that it can smash up. So if you guys like this video, smash that like button. If you guys have any questions whatsoever about the GW30 Great White Skimmer or any of the Great White Skimmer range, leave a comment down below. And if I can't answer it, I'll make sure I get someone that can. And uh, please consider subscribing, cost you guys nothing at all. And it goes a long way into helping this channel grow. And my friends, until next time, peace.